Hi everyone, welcome back to part two of our Battle of the Bulge table series. Um, I'm Rob at Legion Studios and what we're going to be doing today is we're going to continue the build with putting in the hills and, uh, and drawing in some of the roads. Um, the, the reason we're doing this table, as I mentioned, in, if you didn't watch part one, um, on building the foundation, which I have here, is um, I own Legion's Hobbies and Games here in Pittsburgh, and we're celebrating the release of the Battle of the Bulge book. And what I wanna do is we have a great um, bolt action community here, and I thought it would be nice with a lot of the winter releases, and um, you know, I have some generic winter tables out there, but I thought I would do one that's a little more themed towards um, the Battle of the Bulge. And frankly, this table could be used for Eastern Front battles as well. So um, what I have planned is we're gonna be doing uh, maybe a crossroads through here. I did some research in many materials. Um, watch Band of Brothers episodes again. Just a few things to kind of get an idea of what I wanted to do with the Scenics the last week or so. And, um, and read through some of the campaigns in here. And I'd like to do a, a crossroads coming in and a couple hills on each side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna show you how to work with some of this foam, how to select the pieces to use in certain areas, how to mount it to the table, and how to shape the foam in this video. Um, and then we're gonna be um, putting in the basics of the, um, of the roads, which are gonna be built into the table. Everything else is gonna be modular. So. Okay, so the hills are going to be made out of the same foam that we mounted the table. Um, you know, we've done a lot of tables around here, so fortunately I have a lot of scraps, um, you know, laying around. Um, I really, this is pretty much for making a gaming table, this pink or blue foam, depending on where you get it. If you're in the U.S., this is from Home Depot, this is from Lowe's, um, other, uh, you know, DIY shops is, um, is going to have it, uh, you know as well but that's what I have close to me um, and I have multiple shapes and sizes of this here so from scraps so you know it's very important um, this is way larger than what I'm going to use I'm going to cut this down so I'm going to show you it's very easy to cut this I pretty much just slice it and and it snaps um, you know so that's that's not hard at all shaping it's very easy with sandpaper um, you know there are hot knife um, and wire cutters I do use those at times and I may use it on this table in some aspects but for the most part I carve it with a um, drywall um, saw drywall knife hand knife and then sand it into place um, I just get I think you get a nice more natural um, you know blend um, and smoothness on the with the foam to make it look more a little more realistic than what a wire cutter does um, so one thing that's very important when you're selecting this foam for using on the edges of the hills is it's good to have a nice square edge um, so on a newer piece that's very easy because I can just line this up on the edge um, and let me show you over here you know this piece was right from the store this way so it has a nice sharp edge and because I'm using this right on the corner I want this to be clean. I want the, the trim is going to go over top of this and we will shape this foam down and then bring it down. If I wanted extra pieces on top to make a little bit of a different size, I would do the same thing if it's on the edge. That's not important if you're just doing a hill for the middle of your um, middle of your board. It can be shaped any way. But these edges, I either like to use a piece that's from the end where I've cut off for a six foot table or I want to cut off some fresh pieces and make sure that I get a really nice clean cut um, so that the edge of the table um, just looks neat. Um, you don't want it to look, you know, hacked up on the end there. So, um, you know, in the past, like I mentioned, I'm trimming this board in, but in the past I, I would just leave these exposed and it's bad enough when, when, you know, the players are over top of it tearing it up um, and not on purpose, but just from natural play. But, um, you know, I want this when it's completed to be a nice smooth surface here. Okay, so we're going to start um, shaping this foam into uh, hills. Um, I'm really not trying to reproduce anything that is historically accurate as far as terrain features in the Ardennes. Um, I'm going more of a historic fiction type of um, for, feel for this. Um, you know, it's such a small area, it would really be hard anyway. And I want this to be used generically. So, um, you know, doing some research and looking, you know, I, I, there were some small hills. Um, obviously, there were a couple areas in the Ardennes that were that were had some altitude to them, but um, you know, for the most part, from the pictures that I have seen, um, they the hills were fairly small, and for gaming purposes, that makes sense as well. So I just want to. 
Okay, I apologize. The mic wasn't uh, jacked in when I did this. So um, basically what I'm doing here is I'm just drawing some lines on the foam to give me a guideline to cut. Um, and we'll just take the knife from here and just carve around. Just uh, it's just it's good to have a marks on there to uh, so you have a guide. These are a few of the tools we're going to be using to uh, cut and uh, shape the foam. Uh, the first is a is a drywall knife. Um, this is basically a serrated blade on a handle. Um, this is used for um, doing drywall for cutting out outlets and um, light switches, etc. And uh, the next tool we're going to be using is just your basic um, pre-manufactured sanding block. Again, you can use any sort of tool that cuts foam or would cut um, in any sort of, um, you know, any sort of, of sanding block or a sanding material. Um, these are just convenient and they're super cheap and they do last a long time. You can get different, uh, different core, you can get coarse, fine, medium. I believe this one is a fine, this one is a medium. Um, if you're really taking away a lot of surface, then you obviously you want a coarse, um, a coarse sandpaper block. So um, I think these are made by 3M and are available at any do-it-yourself shop. So. So we have the foam pretty much, you know, rough cut, but um, you can see how I've blended this. It does make a mess. So uh, fortunately, I have a shop area here. The shop back will handle it. Um, so basically, you know, I brought this down to a uh, to a smooth edge around the edge around the, to the side. Now I do still have a rock face here. I want to trim this down a little more. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to bring this in a little deeper. Um, to this edge. So I want to start cutting at a little more of an angle because I want the um, you know I want this edge to come in smooth so I don't have a you know a hard line here. I want this to blend in and then I'll use um, either joint compound or spackling to kind of smooth that out onto the table before I start putting the sand and terrain down. But I do I don't want a hard edge here. I want it so um, you know it kind of blends in naturally with the uh, for the hills. So, you know, we want this to go down as thin as you can. Um, so, just want to kind of rough this in. It's nice because I'm not really trying to do anything historically accurate, so I don't have to follow any sort of uh, geographical, you know, terrain elements. So I can just pretty much use artistic license on this and uh, just keep cutting around. So I'm gonna blend this in, smooth it, and I'm gonna go ahead and get this top piece um, shaped and uh, ready to mount it, and we'll, um, we'll go through mounting this, uh, mounting this onto the phone. Okay, I think this is gonna work out okay for the, the way the landscape looks here. Uh, one thing I did notice is when I was cutting is I got a little deep in this area. So rather than, um, it, it's pretty much the angle I wanted, but rather than work on filling this with, with um, you know, spackling or joint compound and using so much to fill a hill a hole, I wanna, I'm gonna go ahead and thin this down and gradiate this down a little bit and shape it so this, these pits aren't here, um, just to save some drying time. That's a big area to be putting in filler. So um, now's the time to fix these type of things um, to make, just make the process easier. And again, because I'm not trying to do anything historically accurate or following any sort of uh, exact geographic um, space, I can do, you know, the artistic license on this and just shape this till it fits for my, you know, work to be able to work on it easier. So Okay, so we have this uh, second piece roughed in. Now, I um I know I want to show you how to mount this, but and I still have to sand it. But I thought I would share a tip. You know, I've been um, I've been working with this foam a long time. I've had this door again for ten years, and I've been using this stuff even before that. And uh, I, you know, cutting large pieces, um, you know, has always been an exhausting project. And I was using this knife 
and it just wasn't doing it and I realized wow I have an actual handsaw <laughs> in the um, in the in the cabinet so for these long pieces this worked great it cut right through it I mean you had to saw it like you would wood but I just wanted to show you a little bit because I'm going to take this down a little bit smoother edge you know just start cutting and you can really start to shape this very well so if I wanted to bring a nice gradient and just kind of shave some off to bring this down this saw is my new friend so um, you know a little bit of a tip there um, the hand saw um, this is a small one is really basically all you need because I'm not really using pieces cutting pieces of this type of hills foams that, that this this length of a saw is, is going to be uh, it's good the longer one's not going to be needed so uh you know this stuff works great so there's your tip we all learn all the time that's what's great about this hobby okay so we're back again and um i have this pretty much in good shape the top piece is now is now finished and uh cleaned up my mess a little bit so i can work and uh we are ready to sand this but um, I still have to cut the other piece and I thought I would use this as an opportunity to show um, because I have a fairly large section I started to cut it and then thought I'm going to show you guys how to actually cut this foam and how easy it is you know I want to shape this down to come in this way and I don't want to waste this uh, extra piece I can use this for another project so basically I just take a shop knife um, now this is not the way I would do a super clean cut but I just want to save this scrap but um, you know, for rough cutting, the saw blade works great, a hot knife works great, but I just want to go through and just kind of score this. Get a good line in there. Get it on the edge of something um, with a straight and just snap down. And it breaks right off. And actually, you can see how if we did a, um, you know, this is where the, line, the knife went through, but once you get um, halfway through this and it snaps on a sharp edge, sharp edges are very easy to do because I can actually just trim this, get it into place, and just break it down straight and it'll snap to a nice clean edge. So if I am using a scrap piece and I wanted to get it on the corner to mount it really clean, that's a good way to get a good clean sharp edge. Because actually trying to cut through this, you're probably going to end up cutting off a, uh, you know, cutting a, uh, a chunk out of this just because knives don't really cut this well so I just kind of score it by pushing don't saw just kind of push through get it on an edge and give it a snap so I'm gonna get this piece all cut up and when I come back we're gonna show how to sand some of this and we'll get it mounted okay so all of the hills are cut and uh, shaped to about where I want I think I want them um, I added a few extra little um, smaller scraps that I had just to break up the flatness of this and just to give it a little bit of aesthetics and uh, you know for gaming use um, this will be great as well um, as I said we're gonna have I carved in a little bit a rough of a road here um, and this will get shaped again with the next step which is the sanding um, so the next phase on this what we're gonna do is I'm just gonna take some sanding blocks um, and we're just gonna start just kind of shaping the sand back and forth um, getting off a lot of the uh, the heavy rough pieces on here and sort of getting a little more natural um, terrain area now I eventually want to cover a lot of this rough area with a um, I use joint compound um, you could also use spackling joint compound is a little bit um, a little bit of a different material but it's you can sand it when it's done so if you have brush marks and you can still shape a little bit where um, spackling um, won't let you do that as much um, joint compound does take a little bit longer to dry but um, but I usually let these sit overnight anyway so that's not too much of a problem so I'm just gonna sand this and get this into place and uh, get it to the point that I can glue these down permanently um, I'm also going to um, shape this road a little bit better that comes up and uh, I may put one end here to go this way so I might cut one into this um, now you can use these blocks here which work great um, there may be some areas that I actually use a, um, a power sander um, to finish this up with 
Um, I have a small palm sander for detail sand. It doesn't really kick up a lot of this dust, but I would still wear a respirator, not a respirator, but just a uh, face mask. Um, you know, the cheap cloth ones that go over um, just to keep you from inhaling any of the, the fine powder that an electric one would work. But I, for the most part, most of my sanding is done with these sanding blocks. So I'm gonna um, continue on. I'm gonna sand this and um, I'll see you when this is finished. Okay, so everything is sanded and uh, we vacuumed up all the loose foam on the table and we are ready to start putting some wood glue down. And uh, again, just like mounting the, the foam on the board, um, we're just gonna brush some wood glue on here, get it into place and secure it and let it dry. And Okay, like when we put the, um, the wood glue on this table, um, you know, it doesn't have to be all over everything, but just make sure that you get the glue all the way to the edges of the, um, of the piece that you're putting on. Now, this glue is not thinned. Um, it's just pure wood glue. Again, it's um, Type Bond 2. I like the, the 2 or even 3 um, better than the regular Type Bond. It just has a much better drying time, um, a better grip. It's just a more professional um, product. So the next step here is we're going to flip this over and just kind of slide it into place and make sure that you're square onto the edges. And again, don't worry about any glue that may have got on your table. Um, if you really want to, you could wipe it up with water right now, like a rag. Um, but honestly, most of this is going to get covered with sand and, uh, and joint compound and other sort of materials um, anyway. So it really doesn't matter. So we're going to secure this, put the other pieces on, and uh, that should be it. Okay, so here's the table. I haven't secured the weight down onto these to, for it to cure, but you can see the layout. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take some paint cans and we're simply going to apply some weight all around um, you know, in these areas to hold the glue down to let it cure. So I'm going to put all the cans down and I'll be right back for the conclusion of part two. So we've had the paint cans on. Um, it looks like everything should be good here. And so I'm going to take these off and we'll take a look at the, uh, the table as it stands at the end of part two. Okay, everyone, here's the table um, as it should be at the end of here, part two. And I want to thank everybody um, very much for hanging with me through um, part two of the bulge table build. Um, let me tell you a little bit about real quick what's in store for us for part three. Um, the official part three will actually start putting some smoothing this in with some joint compound and some other materials. And, um, and then I'm going to start to draw out the beginning of the roads and show you how to shape in the roads. Um, it'll be another video about this length and uh, you know I'm going to take this in step as many as it takes to get the table done. So hang with me, I'm, I'm on a pretty aggressive schedule. Um, the other things we're gonna do is I'm gonna do a few shorts in between um, you know, part three on doing some modular sections. Um, I haven't, I don't know, maybe special series or something. I don't know what we're gonna call it yet, but um, I wanna show how to make um, bases for the trees that we're gonna be using on here, as well as um, you know, by mounting some of these onto them and showing how um, I use these using plastic card, other sort of materials with a uh, Vallejo pumice, the sand, and mounting these trees securely to the base. Um, and I'd also like to show how to actually do the same thing and start building out some of these before we um, start weathering them with snow and painting them um, so that they're ready. So I want to kind of do those in some series to show how the modular terrain is going to be built as well side by side. So when we get to the end of this video or the end of the table, everything is, um, you know, completes at the same time. So uh, thanks again. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and uh, stay tuned for part three. Thanks.